precious people of God, we appreciate His goodness as we come with thanksgiving. It's day 123 by the grace of God as we come to proclaim His goodness and His mercy and just worship Him and glorify His name for He's worthy to be praised, worthy to be adored, worthy, worthy, worthy. Hallelujah! Come on, begin to worship Him. Begin to glorify His name. Magnify His name. He is worthy, 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 worthy. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the honor. We give you the honor. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. We honor you, Lord. We sound the trumpet and we glorify your name. Hallelujah. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We bless your name. There is no other God like you. Our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you, Lord. Our eyes are looking to you, Father. Hallelujah! We sound the trumpet as we commence lifting up your voice, lifting up our voices, lifting up our hearts to you. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Asante Yesu. Asante Yesu. Asante means thank you. In Swahili, we bless the name of the Lord even as we come to worship Him and glorify Him. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Nema. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
down. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the honor that is due to your name. That is due to your name, Lord. We we magnify your name. We honor you, Lord Jesus. As we commence this time, Father, we say there is no God like you. We decree that there is no other God like you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored, Father. May you be glorified, Lord Jesus. May you be lifted in this time, O God. We bless you, Lord. Even as we come into this time, we appreciate his mercy, O God. Asante Buana Hallelujah Oh Lord We thank you for day one Through To day 123 Father truly It's been your mercy For allowing us into season 6 Lord It's just your mercy Lord and your grace so our eyes are ah, macho yangu, macho yangu. Hmm. Macho yangu, na ya inua, ni tazame, ni... How does that go? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, we pray, open our eyes to see wonderful things in your law. Open our eyes. As we proclaim your word, let it become flesh in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 123, we come to this wonderful, wonderful scripture in Psalm 123. We give glory to God for his mercy that is enduring forever. We thank God for this time. Thank you so much, Sister Nema, for leading us in that wonderful chorus that the Lord has helped you. We bless the name of the Lord. Psalm 123 is where we are today. Very short one. Actually, Psalm 123 is very easy for you to memorize because it's a very short psalm. It is actually only four verses long and you can just have it in your heart for time for prayers, time for you to, you know, when you are in a difficult situation or when you are in a thanksgiving situation. The book of Psalms is one that has been mentioned in uh, the scriptures and you notice that in the book of Ephes in the book of Colossians and the book of Ephesians, Paul writes to them and says, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, giving thanks to the Father. So, in all wisdom, admonish one another. So, this is what we are here to do in the journey of 150 days of Psalms. We thank God for His goodness, allowing us to go for missions, allowing us to continue putting the Bible in people's hands. It's such a blessing that the Lord has enabled us to do. Psalm 123, it says, A song of ascents. It says, I lift my eyes to you, to you whose throne is in heaven. As the eyes of the slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us, for we have endured much contempt. We have endured much ridicule from the proud, much contempt from the arrogant. Psalm 123, our eyes look to the Lord. The expectation of mercy from God in the day of contempt. There are many times when there are contemptuous situations, situations that are difficult, situations that are, uh, are tough in the way they operate. But when a man's eyes are towards God, he will always see God's mercy coming toward him. He who dwells in heaven beholds all the calamities of his people and thence will send to save all trusting ones. When man's eyes are towards the Lord, he'll always see God's mercy coming toward him. He who dwells in heaven beholds all the calamities of his people and thence will send to save all the trusting ones. So, 
It is true, God has his people. It is true, God answers some people. And the scripture tells us clearly who these people are. The people that are looking to him for mercy we will find mercy coming from him. But them that do not look to him will not find mercy. Here is it from the scripture. It is a song of degrees. Unto thee I lift up mine eyes. O thou that dwellest in the heavens. The moment that you are putting your confidence in God, you will experience mercy from him. The moment when you choose not to wait on him, then that's what you will expect and that's what you will get. There is a man who wrote a quote. His man was Henry Ford. This guy created the first, the first functional automobile. Very nice car. Ford, Henry Ford. And he said, if you think you can, and if you think you cannot, you are right. It's basically based on how, where are your eyes? The scripture is telling us clearly, oh hallelujah, thank you Lord for this revelation. And this is for somebody out there who needs to know that God is in the, in the company of the righteous. God is with you. He will not leave you. The eyes, where are your eyes? Your eyes, why are you looking? Because if you are not looking to God, you are looking to something. If you are looking to your problems, definitely you will not see the presence of God anywhere. But the moment man's eyes are toward God, he will always see God's mercy coming toward him. He who dwells in the heavens beholds all the calamities of his people and hereby will send to save all his trusting ones. So we trust God that he will give us victory in every condition. Our eyes look to the Lord, our God. And even with a closed door, he will still send you a customer. That's who he is. His ways are not ours. His ways are beyond what we think or imagine. He is ahead of us, going and putting a bookmark on where your eyes are. So it doesn't matter whether you are watching me from Haiti and the, the earthquakes have been coming and smashing your city every time and people are dying. They even at some point assassinated your own president in Haiti. The political situation is turmoil. The natural situation is turmoil. Health is turmoil. The church is even getting storms, removing the church and removing the roof and everything. My question for you, dear child of God, where are your eyes? Proverbs 4, it tells us, fix your eyes, fix your gaze ahead of you. Eh? It says, fix your eyes right in front of you. In the book of Psalm, uh, Proverbs 4, fix your gaze. And then it says, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may behold him in his temple. Hallelujah. Proverbs 27 verse 4. So it is true. God has his people. Mungu wako na watu wake. Ni kweli. Nimekuja kudhibitisha. Kwa neno la mungu. Ya kwamba mungu ako na watu wake. Na watu wake ni wale wanao mtumaini yeye. If you put your trust in God. You put your eyes towards God. He will always. You will always see God's mercy. But the moment you choose. Hallelujah. We come to Proverbs. Beloved of God. We thank God. Proverbs. Proverbs 13, Proverbs 13, fix our eyes on the Lord. Let's fix it on the Lord. It says, a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not listen to rebuke. From the fruit of his lips, a man enjoys good things, but the unfaithful have a craving for violence. He who guards his lips guards his life. But he who speaks rashly will come to ruin. The sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked bring shame and disgrace. Righteousness guards the man of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. One man pretends to be rich yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor 
yet has great wealth. It says in Proverbs 13, verse 8, A man's riches may ransom his life. A man's riches may ransom his life. But a poor man hears no threat. The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. You see that? Pride only breeds quarrels. And one of the key ways to check if there is pride in your life is to look at your level of prayer. If there is prayerlessness, pride is heavily present. Why? Because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So one of the things that will cause you not to experience God in your life is pride. There are different types of pride. There is spiritual pride. There is pride of life. There is foolish pride. This, all of them, pride is what got Lucifer out of heaven. You need to remember this. Pride can never stand before God. And pride only breeds quarrels. The moment you see a place of people quarreling, pride is not absent. In fact, the Proverb 13 verse 10 tells us, Pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. It says, Dishonest money dwindles away, but he who gathers money little by little makes it grow. So if you are suddenly waiting to all of a sudden get to sudden fortune, then you need to understand the only way that can happen is dishonesty. And dishonest money will dwindle away. You can hear the bank robbers and the people who steal money in heavy amounts. They never get to use it because it just dwindles away. But he who gathers money little by little makes it grow. 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. It says, he who scorns instruction will pay for it. But he who respects a command is rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. Listen to this. Good understanding wins favor. But the way of the unfaithful uh -huh, is what? Is hard. It is true. It says what? Good understanding wins favor favor but the way of the unfaithful is hard if you are unfaithful with god and faithful with people your way will be very very hard i love the scriptures because they help us to understand what is happening in our life we help they help us understand how it is happening how it's unfolding verse 13 uh, chapter 13 verse 16 it says every prudent man acts out of knowledge but a fool exposes his folly says a wicked messenger falls into trouble but a trustworthy envoy brings healing he who ignores discipline uh -huh, comes to poverty and shame but whoever heeds correction is honored so if you fear poverty and you hate poverty with all your heart then do not ignore discipline do not uh, be av uh, do not avoid correction. Even in that foolish pride or the pride of life or spiritual pride, whatever pride that is keeping you away from knowledge, if you allow yourself to come to the place of instruction, then you will run away from poverty and from shame. I want to tell you clearly, beloved, poverty and laziness are brothers and sisters. If you are a born-again Christian, fully worshipping God, doing everything, but you are lazy, my friend, you will come to poverty. So, if you come to the place of discipline, you will not know poverty. You will not know shame. Case in point, Kenya is one of the most amazing countries in the whole world. That everywhere there are athletics in the world, the national flag of Kenya flies high.
Do you know what makes those marathoners win those millions and millions of dollars? Do you know what makes them? Some of them don't even know English. Some of them even have not gone to school. But because they have not ignored discipline, they will not come to poverty. They will not come to shame. Amen. A longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but fools detest turning from evil. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Proverbs 13, verse number 20. Who are you walking with? Number two question. Number one question is where are your eyes? Your eyes, where are they looking? Because if you put your eyes on the Lord, you will definitely prosper. But the one who keeps his eyes on the problems will never experience the mercies of God. Because the mercies of God are not connected with the problems. The problems come and they will come in diverse ways. But God will always give us capacity to overcome the challenges. Listen to this. Misfortune, okay wait, verse 20, please evaluate your company. The people who are influencing you, the people you call every week, the people you are talking to, the people who are in your field, in your circle, who are those people? Because he who works with the wise grows wise. But a companion of fools suffers harm. If at all the companions, the people who you call your go-to people, the people who make you feel good, they are foolish then you will suffer harm. What does foolish mean? Anyone that does not honor God, does not choose God, is a fool. What does the scripture say? In Proverbs 14 verse 1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. So if you are, in a, you are a companion of 10 people, or 5 people that are choosing to live their life without looking towards God, then you are a companion, you are having a companion with fools. And you will suffer harm. Again, it says in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 10, verse 8. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him, and he consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. So Rehoboam is a good experience of a man who does not follow advice, who does not go in the counsel of the right people. Listen to this. He says, he, misfortune pursues the sinner, but prosperity is the reward of the righteous. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but a sinner's wealth sweeps, uh, is stored up for the uh, righteous. In verse 23, a poor man's field may produce abundant food, but injustice sweeps it away. He who spares the rod hates his son. But he who loves him is careful to discipline him. The righteous eat to their heart's content, but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry. Mm. Do you hear that? The righteous eat to their heart's content, but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry. We will just look at Ecclesiastes 2, verse 26, and then go straight to Zechariah. So it says this in Ecclesiastes 2, verse 26. It says, To the man who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering, storing up wealth, to hand it over to the one who who, please, who pleases God. These two is meaningless and are chasing after the wind. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 26. If you forget any other part that I showed you in Ecclesiastes, don't forget Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 26. We move now to the book of Zechariah. Ladies and gentlemen, Zechariah is second last book of the Old Testament and by the mercies of God he has allowed us into the book of Zechariah and we bless the name of the Lord for this one. So I will proclaim. Then I looked up, and there before me was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I asked, Why are you going? Where are you going? He asked me. He answered me. To measure Jerusalem, to find out how wide and long it is. 
Then the angel who was speaking to me left, and another angel came to meet him and said to him, Run, tell that young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of men and livestock in it. And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. Come, 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 flee from the land of the north, declares the Lord, for I have scattered, hallelujah, I have scattered you to the four winds of heaven, declares the Lord. Come, O Zion, escape, you who live in the daughter of Zabulon, for it is, is what the Lord Almighty says. After he has honored me and sent me against the nations that have plundered you, for whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. I will surely raise my hand against them so that their slaves will plunder them. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me. Shout and be glad, O daughter of Zion, for I am coming and I will live among you, declares the Lord. Many nations will be joined with the Lord in that day and will become my people. I will live among you and you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. The Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Listen to verse 13. Hallelujah. Be still before the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Listen to this. Be still. Be still. Be still. Hallelujah. Be still before the Lord, all mankind, because he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. Beloved, we thank God for his mercies. We thank God for his favor. In Zechariah 2 verse 13, a clear instruction. Be still before the Lord. Don't be in a hurry in his presence. Be still. Be still. Be still. Let him be your guide. Because he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We will conclude with this one. It says, I hope you will put up with a little of my foolishness but you're already doing that i am jealous for you with a godly jealousy i promise you to one husband to christ so that i may present you as a pure virgin to him but i am afraid that just as eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning my the serpent's cunning your minds may may be uh, somehow led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received from a, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. But I don't think I am in the least inferior to those super apostles. I may not be a trained speaker, but I do have knowledge we have made this perfectly clear to you in every way. Was it a sin for me to lower myself in order to elevate you by preaching the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by receiving support from them so as to serve you. And when I was with you and needed something, it was not, I was not a burden to anyone. For the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied what I needed. I have kept myself from being a burden to you in any way and will continue to do so. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, nobody in the regions of Achaia will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I do not love you. God, no. Because I do not love you. Why? Because I don't love you? Question mark. God knows I do and will keep on doing what I am doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. For such men are false apostles, deceitful 
workmen masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then, if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. I want to mention this clear. 2 Corinthians 11.14 No wonder Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So it is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. People are so desperate for the power of God that any little demonstration of power, people will run to that place looking for the power because they think that person has the power of God by the things that are happening. But child of God, make no mistake. If Satan himself can master Quaid, can change himself and look like an angel of light, how does that happen? I asked the Lord, how does it happen? How can Satan change himself and become an angel of light? He said, they said this to me. When a believer is not praying, when a believer is not prayerful, the armor that they carry is not in action. The spiritual armor is not working. They don't have faith. The helmet of salvation is lost. The breastplate of righteousness is missing. They start speaking lies so they lose the belt of truth. And they don't have the feet of the gospel of peace. Then slowly by slowly, the angel that God has released to work with you is unarmed. He has no truth. He has no word. He has no sword. He has no faith, no shield. He has no helmet because you dropped your helmet long time ago. So what will they do? Those angels are captured in the realm of the spirit. And unless prayer is made for that individual, those demons now can take the character of that demon, of that angel. Remember, demons are fallen angels. They are in very character spirits as angels. So when they capture one of them, who is in righteousness but does not have the armor, what happens? They come and appear to you like an angel of light. And what happens after that? The person starts getting into false prophecies, false apostleships. Let me tell you, the Lord cannot tell us to set your minds on things above and then all the prophetic words we are getting are set your things on things below. No. One character of proper prophecy will be in line with the word of God. Totally in line. The mercy of God. Our eyes look to you, Lord. Just like the maidens, the mistress, they look to the mistress. They say, Lord, have mercy. Our mercy is coming from you, Lord. Even the things that we think we know, you still teach us more. Second Corinthians eleven sixteen. 16. It says, I repeat and let no one take me for a fool. You see what, beloved? The book of Second Corinthians is writing to a fallen church. A church that has walked into carnality. A church that has backslidden. Paul is writing to backsliders. And this is the same message that I am bringing to you, backslidden Christian, that is looking to the earthly things and not the heavenly things. If you are focusing your eyes on the problem and not focusing on the Lord, you will not receive mercy. You will receive the side effects of problems. And keep complaining and say, God, I pray every day. Why are you not hearing me? <laughs> Where are your eyes? What are you focusing on? You are focusing on your bank account? You're focusing on your money. You're focusing on the problems that you call problems. Did you know that there's somebody whose money cannot do anything? They cannot buy that storm from not coming to carry away their house. They cannot use money in the bank. In fact, the bank will also suffer some damage from the, from the tornadoes. I repeat, says Paul. Let no one take me for a fool. But if you do, then receive me just as you would a fool so that I may do a little boasting. In this self-confident boasting, I am not talking as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many are boasting in the way the world does, I too will boast. You gladly put up with fools since you are so wise. You gladly put up with fools since you are so wise. In fact, you even put up with anyone who enslaves you or exploits you, or takes advantage of you, or pushes, pushes himself toward, or slaps you in the face. Uh -huh. Did you hear that? Or slaps you in the, in the face. There are certain men, now that it is being proved that they are men of God, when they can slap you in the face and tell you, hey, get up, hey, talk a pimple, talk a bigger coffee. 
It is here in the scripture. I am not talking any word about anybody. The scripture says, In fact, you put up with anyone who enslaves you. Says only buy this water, buy this salt, buy this handkerchief, buy this, buy that. It's the scripture. It says, in fact, you put up with anyone who enslaves you or exploits you or takes advantage of you. Eh? Tells you, bring all the money you have. Bring it sacrificially. Sell your house and bring money. It says, if in fact, you put up with anyone who enslaves you or exploits you or takes advantage of you or pushes himself forward or slaps you in the face. To my shame, I admit that we were too weak for that. What anyone else dares to boast about, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare not I also dare to boast about. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk about it like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled, and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst, and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I don't feel weak? Who is led to sin and I don't inwardly burn? I must boast, I will boast, of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under King Aretas had the city of Damascus guarded in order to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped through his hands. This is in the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 25. But his followers took him from his harbor, took him by night and lowered him in the basket through an opening in the wall. Beloved of the Lord. Hmm. We come to an end of this broadcast. But as I conclude, I will proclaim Ephesians chapter 2 and then I will leave Colossians 4 and Revelation 8. I'll just mention them in passing. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. It tells us this, listen more. But because of his great love for us, verse 4. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions. Get this understanding. It is by grace you have been saved. It says in verse 6, And God raised us up with Christ. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory! Hey! He seated us up with Christ. We are sent to that level. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. We sound the trumpet and worship the Lord. Sound him with a tambourine and worship him with a tambourine and harp. Worship with the drums. Worship him with a violin. Worship him with a trumpet. Hallelujah. Listen more. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages He may show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Listen to this now. For it is by grace, through faith, It is by grace through faith that you have been saved. It's not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works let anyone should boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us to do in advance. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the opportunity you have accorded us. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation. Even as we keep our eyes on you, we receive mercy from you. Our eyes are not going to waver from you, Lord. We put our trust in you, Lord. We put our confidence in you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Go ahead of us, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. If you are here watching, I just want to bless the Lord. I encourage you to read the book of Colossians 4. In fact, I'll just give you verse 2. It says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Colossians 4 verse 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Then also something else I remind you. Keep away from pride. Because pride will cause God to resist you. You will not pray when you are proud. You will find pride always breeds quarrels. And that's why a lot of people are always quarrelsome. Because of pride, we need to humble ourselves and keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Let's pray for you who is giving your life to Jesus. Romans chapter 10 verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Also the Lord is putting it in my heart to pray for the sick. He knows where they are, all the sick people, and including them that are in operation areas, our military people, those going to the DRC, those going into different parts, into Somalia, those are Kenyan troops. But we have American troops in Afghanistan, we have, uh, we have American troops in uh, Middle East, certain corners. We have some secret service people all across the nations. In Israel, the IDF, and even praying for the Palestinians and all those enemies of Israel, that God will begin to move among them and begin to save them as they put their heart in the Lord. So if you are getting saved right now, I want you to pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we also pray for the sick, them that are depressed, them that their eyes are on the problems and not on the mercies of God. We pray for them that their hearts will be turned to you. We also pray for anyone and everyone celebrating their birthday today. We cover this day with the blood of Jesus. We soak their, their name in the blood of Yeshua. Lord, we also continue to pray for the journey of 150 days of Psalms. We pray that you continue to shine your light on us in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shalom. I'll see you in the next broadcast. Shalom. I also want to appreciate our partners and you'd like to give to this ministry. The number is plus 254-722-087087. And also through the PayPal you may use Malcolm in Christ at Gmail. And that would be a good thing. Shalom, 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 shalom. Baraka, baraka zabwana. Zikufuate, hallelujah. Thank you for watching.